Now, just quickly, we'll talk about screen capture software. This is a fantastic development in technology where you can record off your screen. Most of you are probably using it these days. It's great for videos, for tutorials, for feedback for people. <coughs> you know, we work with a lot of people overseas. They do a thing. It's better to, rather than write a long email about how you want a logo to change, just make a screen flow of it. And it's, it's a really effective way. Um, I use it for grabs, like when I'm doing stuff for clients and I want you know, their website to appear on there. I go and I record it and then you can animate it and do a, a lot of stuff with it. Two main programs, ScreenFlow, which is for Mac, and Camtasia, which, also, which is for PC but it has a Mac version. I prefer ScreenFlow, I'm a Mac man. It records the whole screen. It's more intuitive. Um, Camtasia, though, has its merits. Um, now, you can either use your computer's built-in mic, you know, that's, that's there, or you can use a, one of these things, like the snowball that you see, or a Bluetooth headset if you're not going to be viewed. It's, it's a really effective thing because it'll be a clear, uh, a clear capturing of the audio. And to, to build on these things, uh, Camtasia now has come out on Mac as well. We've got a Mac version. Yeah, yeah, it's not so, nearly yeah. as in-depth, though. So Ben's right. Definitely go for ScreenFlow if you're going to be on a Mac. It's got some really cool stuff in there. Uh, when it comes to actually recording the videos as well, just like when I'm recording a video, I'll make notes on my whiteboard. I'll do the same thing for when I'm recording a screen recording, where I'll make my bullets in a notepad. I'll have it off the the recorded area because when you're doing screen capture software you can select what area of your screen you're looking to record then you move that slightly out of shot and just it's like reading the text uh, typically when I'm doing screen recording stuff though I don't necessarily have to do as much post edit because I've got uh, I just find it easier to get the flow when I'm doing on-screen recording we've got a, a question over there for Brent so I, I think it's really important just make sure that you document uh, what it is that that process that you're going to do scripting this is the area where most people go wrong and I think uh, one final point I'd just like to add in regards to scripting people who it may look like they're doing it really really well and I know Rob and I talked about this in the break Ed's a fantastic example where it feels like he just goes off the cuff and that's just a an internet marketer for those who, who have, who's not familiar with Ed Dale, it feels like he's going off the cuff, but behind the scenes, um, you've got Rob who creates the scripts and sets everything up to make sure that Ed is hitting the right points. So scripting is an area that you need to start with first. Brent? You mentioned uh, putting your notepad on the uh, side of the screen and block, blocking it out. Uh, something that I've discovered recently is Post-it makes clear Post-it notes that you can actually stick on your screen. Cool. So you can put them over your screen and actually do a full screen screen cam and still have your notes appearing on your screen. That's pretty good. <laughs> five dollar. I owe these five, right. this five dollars to uh, James Ramco. <laughs> I might be a little bit, you know, old school here, but if I'm doing a screen recording, I just have the notes sitting on the desk on a piece of paper. I do too, Pete, but you know. <laughs> it's a bit old school, I know. I but, know. You know. That's for people who can still write. And with the screen flow, you record it and then you can animate it. There's lots of things you can do. You can zoom in, you can highlight things, you can change the angle. It's, it's, it's just the sky's the limit. It's, it's a really great resource. The last one is slides. You can use um, PowerPoint or Keynote and make videos out of that. Dave, you yeah. talk about this. The, the way that we do this is usually, let's say I'm doing a video <coughs> interview with someone, I might record the audio first, and we're doing it with the BBS formula as well at the moment, where we're recording the audio first and then we're matching up the slides afterwards. So it can work really well because you, you, you map out what your script is going to be and make sure that the audio is really smooth and you, then you can use some software like Audacity to clean it up. You know, you might speed up the tempo slightly so it moves at a slightly better pace, ever so slightly. You might snip it at a couple of points where there's a bit of dead time, dead air, so you get a really perfect audio. Once you've got that perfect audio, then you go ahead and use Keynote and you, you map out your presentation, the entire presentation, and then what you do is uh, Keynote has an option, otherwise you can just use your screen recording software, Camtasia or ScreenFlow, to bring up your presentation hit play on your audio, that perfect audio that you've got, um, have it playing on the external speaker, maybe you get a headset or something like that, put it just underneath the mic on your Mac so it, it picks up the audio uh, and, and as that plays then you click through the slides so you make sure that you get a v the right time code of that slide series. 
Then you take that video, you drag it into iMovie, you detach the audio, uh, so you've got two, uh, you take the audio off the video, and then you take your good audio and replace out that crappy audio that you recorded off, off the screen. That's like one of the quickest, easiest ways. I know that was a lot there for someone, but you'll just sit and listen to the recording or re-watch that, and I just gave you the process for making really good presentations. For interviews, we don't worry about doing that so much. We don't go to that level of in-depth. Like, we're just happy to match it up because, you know, it's all about getting that, that quantity versus quality out, mm. uh, where if I'm creating a really scripted sales presentation, that's when I tend towards that method I just gave you. And just oh, a few yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, so great for Skype interviews and phone interviews. Uh, record the audio first. I just talked about that. And then when you create your slides, do one or two colors, one or two fonts, and don't. This is a design thing. If you try and, and this is for sales letters, anything, anything online, one or two colors, one or two fonts, one or two sizes. Stick with that, and you'll be so much happier because often you might think it looks really cool at the time if you use all these fonts and fancy things I guarantee you'll come back and look at it six months down the track and you go that looks really average but the more simple you go the happier you'll be with it over the long term and I think it's more professional mm. yeah don't gild the lily as they say oh this is just an example So that's just um, an intro that we had made. Hello, it's David Jennings here from podcastinterviews.com and excited today, I've lined up a fantastic interview with...